Joe Petrosian. Is Joe here? All right. Here we am. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a long time. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. Joe played football, baseball, and basketball at Tucson High School. Uh, played football at John Milano and Ollie Mayfield, all state. Uh, you know, it's hard being uh, playing three sports today, isn't it? It's very difficult. It's, uh, <clears throat> it takes a lot of time to just do one. When you start adding three, uh, you're going from season to season to season. And you no rest, no. Uh, sometimes you don't even get to practice before you got to play. And it was, especially at Tucson High, where I was in the, the mm -hmm. championships or something. And you, one season went right into the next. Well, I guess it's hard too with all the club sports going on in the summer. You got to play different. They expect you to play baseball or, or go football and things like that. Well, that wasn't too bad. I, during the summers, I played softball and and baseball, mm -hmm. and it kept you in shape. It kept you rounded. <clears throat> kept you out of trouble, and uh, we had a great time. A lot of things to do. So you got two state championships at Tucson High School. That, was that your junior senior year? Or? My sophomore year at. Uh, I was brought up to varsity to be a quarterback because of one of them was ineligible and they lost a running back so they stuck me in there and uh, <clears throat> we won the state championship that year and then my senior year we were the only team in the state that was ever voted number one that never went to the, the playoffs. Well, why was that? Uh, they just changed the way the divisions were and we were in the same division with Douglas and, and Loss of Douglas, we beat them real bad up and down the field, but we threw two interceptions and four fumbles and lost 20 to 13. We should have actually been state championships that year. So you played with some pretty great coaches there at Tucson High. I played for four, five uh, Hall of Fame coaches there. I played for Ray Atkins, Alamo, Mayfield, uh, Tony Morales, uh, Jim Wing. I played for the All Star game. He's in, mm -hmm. he's in the Hall of Fame, so. I've, I've been lucky. I, you know, it's kind of something that you coaching is, is being around those guys was great. So talk about going to the University of Arizona, decided to go there to play football. Uh, that was a, a kind of an easy decision. I, I started to go to Oklahoma, and my grandmother and uncle, who went to every game I ever played, every game, when I <clears throat> decided to go to the university. They drove to Oregon, they drove to Wyoming, they drove to Utah. Sometimes they didn't come home for three weeks because we'd have two, two games from home <coughs> up and So, you know, it was kind of a, a thing. They, they raised me and uh, out of respect for them, I, I stayed in Arizona. I was kind of lucky because I met <coughs> my wife in 41 years and uh, it, it's been good. Well, you had some good seasons in UVA too. Were you a leading rusher? Uh, yeah, my my sophomore year, I broke my ankle in a drills down in Cochise, and uh, next year I, I came back and uh, led the team in rushing. Senior year, I got uh, and everybody that ever lives in Arizona gets it is uh, Valley Fever, and I lost 28 pounds my between my junior and senior year, so they stuck me at flanker, and that's one of the toughest positions to learn. So, you know, back then, I mean, you, you break your ankle, it's probably a lot different today. You probably would have come back a lot sooner than you would back then. I was back in 10 weeks yeah. and uh, played the last two games. But uh, if I had thought about it, I, would, I should have redshirted and saved a year of eligibility and would have, it would have helped. But so you play three sports now. You're, what sport do you like the best? Or what sport do you think you're the best at? What, uh, what season is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I liked them all. I love football. Basketball is kind of a thing my uncle told me. He says, you're not going to sit in the house between football and baseball season. So you're going to go play basketball. So I had no choice in that matter. And and, and probably was a, one of the best teams ever in, in Arizona, with the team I played for, for Coach Morales. It was, uh, I mean, unbelievable guys get Delano Price, mm -hmm. Hoagie Simmons, uh, Chuka Miranda, Kenny Ball. I, you know, <clears throat> you, you didn't even think you were going to get to play. Those guys are so good, unless you had a big lead. And uh, it went for Bobby Rowell and Bobby Hart. I would have gotten to play uh, 
a lot less. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he's fouling that, huh? Oh, he's fouling the ball out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, now you had a chance, I guess, what was it with the Dallas Cowboys? Were they looking at you? They uh, sent me a letter, wanted me to be a free agent, sign a contract, and uh, my wife and I talked it over, and, and I said, you know, I could still walk and talk and chew gum, and, uh, you know, I think the days of football are over, and just started playing summer baseball and basketball. I played until played I was 45 years old playing basketball and, and summer baseball, so. You know, it was a good run. It was a lot of fun. It was <clears throat> Ray Atkins. Uh, you know, I saw him about ten years ago before I left to, to San Antonio, and he told me, he said, "Joe, he said, I could have killed you when you when you played football. You should have went to baseball." <laughs> and I remember yeah. you uh, yeah. and, and Paul Moscow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we came about the same time, and uh, the the big difference is how, how much weight training is so much better today than it was back then. You know, Ollie started this uh, my senior year. He started us. Just in between seasons, started the weightlifting programs, and you could see every year his teams got better because he, he got to learn more about the weight training programs. And it's it's essential. I, you know, you look at uh, there's a guy in the Hall of, Hall of Fame now that played at Amphi. That's just a world class weightlifter, John Volpe, and he was one of the first that really proved that uh, that yeah. weightlifting was. Uh, you know, I wish I would have done it more. Mm -hmm. But it didn't. At the time, they kept telling you, if you play baseball, you shouldn't wait for mm -hmm. too much. Yeah. You've got to stay flexible. So, you know, it's <clears throat> things are things we're learning now, and the, and the equipment's better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Well, congratulations. Thanks. 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 Tom Pearson. All right. You see him. <laughs> Tom uh, went to high school in Illinois, played football. Uh, Baseball, uh, wrestling, yeah. all-state wrestler. Yes. Uh, you go to junior college. Is that with Illinois too? Yeah, Joliet Junior College. Actually, Joliet was the first junior college in the country. And uh, it was a great experience, unbelievable experience. We we uh, we set, we had a record going for I don't know how many dual meets we won. But that's back when they, uh, you know, you went against the freshman regular universities because they had freshman teams. They don't have that anymore. So it was it was a great experience. We. Uh, my, my freshman year, I blew my knee out going to the Nationals. My sophomore year, we took, and we took fourth in the nation that year. Then my sophomore year, I got third, and we took, ended up taking second. And my teammate was, is in the Hall of Fame, Bill Bell, who passed away a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And then we came cross country together back, well, it was an experience. I would go, that's for a later time. <laughs> you were an All-American there, weren't you, JC? I was All-American at JC, yes. So you get a scholarship to, uh, was it Texas Western or UTEP? It was, it was, uh, oh, it was UTEP. It was UTEP, UTEP at the time, and then um, we, we, were, we had a really good team. And of course, at the end of the year, they said, um, we're financially strapped, so the program's gone because it was brand new. So they dropped the program. And then that summer, we didn't know what we were doing. So, you know, we didn't fly. We had to drive back home to Chicago, and um, we didn't know what we were going to do. Was, you know, we had no idea. And Coach Nelson from the university called us, and as Bill and I would come and wrestle at the university, and we did. And so that's how we got out here. So otherwise, what would you have been doing? You wouldn't be out here in Tucson now. Uh, I, let me tell you, I would have been driving a truck probably like my dad did right back back home, working construction with my, my brothers. But uh, that, you know, my dream, my whole dream, my whole life was to be a teacher and a coach. Teacher, coach. And uh, I got out here, and, and when we finally graduated, uh, we did our student teaching, and I, I got the student teach under Mr. Favaro. Great influence in my life, and, and, and Al Navaretti, another influence. They, he doesn't realize what kind of an influence it was. And then I got to watch Mr. Millay, Coach Millay, run a program, how to run a wrestling program, as a class act guy. And then and my dream was that I could ever become a head wrestling coach at Swore High School, because I used to, I went one summer and helped Coach Bryan. So I helped him out. And, uh, I was all excited about applying for jobs. I applied for a bunch of jobs. Of course, I didn't get anything. So for one year, I worked construction. And every morning I'd get up, and I'd go, God, if I ever get the opportunity, if I ever get the opportunity to teach, I'm going to work my butt off and, and coach. That's all I want. I just, you know, I just love teaching. I love coaching. And um, I got a job at Apollo Junior High my first year. And it's when Don Colstrat came in at, at Sunnyside. And I was there for two, three, two or three years there, and then I, Coach Brining left and went to, to Rincon, 
in football. And then I got to take over the wrestling program at Swarl. And then I started coaching freshman football. I coached freshman football over at, at Apollo 2. And uh, I did freshman football and wrestling for, I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it. 26 years at Swarl. Yeah, head, I was head coach there for 24, 25 years, 26, I don't know what it is. But I got tired of raising money. It became a fundraiser. Every time you went into the office, they'd go, hey, I need uniforms. Okay, can you fundraise? And it was like, I'm not a fundraiser. I love coaching. I love teaching. But I'm not very good at asking people for money. What's the Bill Bell wrestling term when you won that 10 years in a row? We, um, well, that was named, it was actually the TUSD tournament, Tucson Unified. And then uh, when my, my best friend passed away, we renamed it the William Bell wrestling tournament. And, you know, we had, we had some great kids coming through the program. So then you decided to go to Rincon for a little bit. Yeah, I, I, you know, sometimes you got to leave the, the nest to see if you got, there's a better place. And if the thing I found out about teaching, I'm sure every teacher that's in this room will tell you, no matter where you go, no matter what, the, the kids, kids are kids no matter where you go. And if you, you give them, you're enthusiastic and you want to do, you, you, you're there for them, they'll do anything you ask them to do. It. I found that at a Rincon. Uh, same thing. It was like you know, Rincon was on the, and we kind of, we kind of brought him back. You know, we we uh, worked our butts off, but we got it done. So what's it like? You know, freshman football, into the summer, guys start coming in. You look at the team, and go, man, we got we got a lot of work to do. Every year is experience. That's why I love about it because you see the you see the development of the kids from the baby from the ground up, and. Um, you know, now they're playing TYF or doing all this other stuff. It's amazing how many kids come in and go, hey, I was all this and all that, and you have to ground them real quick, bring them back down to earth, and then we get to build them up, and it's, uh, it's been a, it's a great experience. I love, I love working with the kids. And, you know, again, if you're there, they're going to be there, and they're going to work their butts off. We're, you know, we're, right now we've, got, we've started June 2nd. It's how crazy football has got, or all sports have got. We start June 2nd. And we're there three days a week, and we're averaging 60 kids a night. So every year the kids are getting, getting stronger? It, it, it all comes back to one thing, effort and work. You know, that's the thing we have to constantly, you know, you got to talk about work ethic. Be here, be on time, do stuff you got to do, and push yourself. And this is where I learned from these guys, you know, that I, I watch them, and that's how they were with kids. You know, kids will do whatever you ask them to do. If you raise the bar, they're gonna ri they'll rise up to that, whatever level you want them to meet, they'll, they'll rise up to that level. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Still coaching too, that's good. Yeah, I am. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.